Each task that I entered into the project here, well, the basic task, not the summary task like the research phase, are going to require some sort of resource to complete the task. Resources, as I mentioned in my first training video, can include workers, materials, and costs. And to explain it in a bit more detail, I'm going to go to my PowerPoint presentation. Not only do you have your typical three resources, which is your work, materials, and costs, but we have a fourth resource type, and that's budget. And I'm going to go in detail over each one of these here. First, let's talk about the work resources. There's two types of work resources. The most obvious one are the people that will be working on the task. That's your resource, your laborers, your writers, your editors. And then we have our equipment resources, something that we can use over and over again, not only on a task or another task, but on a completely different project, like a forklift, maybe a paintbrush if we rinse it out, or a hammer. Now you could say that the hammer and the forklift could be a material resource, but material resources are basically consumable items. So the definition would be supplies or consumable items used to complete a task. So in other words, once we're done with the task, like writing our book, we will have used up quite a bit of paper. Also some ink, and well, if we were building a home, we'd use up this lumber here. So consumable items will be your material resources when it's used up when you finish completing a task. The third type of resource are your cost resources. They're basically miscellaneous or indirect expenses that will vary from task to task and don't change by the amount of work performed. And they include airfare, lodging, meals, things that don't really have a direct impact. But you still want to keep track of the expenses because they're part of the project. And then finally, we have what's called the budget resource. And basically, it's the maximum amount of money set aside or budgeted for each resource type. So we've got a set budget for our work. We've got a set budget for the materials, a set budget for the costs. And like I said, those are the four types of resources. So with that in mind, we're back into our project here to enter in our project's resources. And to do that, we need to change views. We need to change it from the current view that you can see over here in the view bar, says Gantt chart, to the resource sheet view. And to change it, there are a number of ways you can change your views. You can either come up here on the task tab to the view group and click on the drop down arrow. There we go, resource sheet. Or you can come down here and look at more views and see what's available. Go ahead and select one and click apply. I'm going to click cancel. Or to save time if you're on a different tab and you don't want to come up here and click on the task tab to go to the views group, you can just come over here and right click on the view bar and come down here and go to the resource sheet or click on more views. Okay, let me click cancel. Let me go back to the task tab. Or you can right click on the view bar and expand it by selecting view bar. It pops it open if that helps you to feel a little bit more comfortable with what you're looking at here. You can now see the icons. You can even come down here at the bottom and click on the down arrow and go down as far as it'll take us. There's more views. Okay, let me click cancel. I like mine collapse, so I'll go ahead and right click and uncheck view bar. And then when I want to go to a view, of course, just right click on it and select a view. The uh, other way that you can go to, or to change views, let me come down here and click off, is down below in the status bar to the far right hand corner here. You've got the four icons. You have the Gantt chart that we're currently in. You can see it's highlighted. Then you have the task usage view, the team planner, and of course the resource sheet view. Now, before I go ahead and go to the resource sheet view, I want you to know that if you ever get lost and you're not sure where you're at or what you're looking at as far as the views go, you can simply look over here in the view bar and say, okay, I'm in the Gantt chart view. But there's something else you should know about as we get a little bit more advanced or more detailed into our uh, project training video, is that in these views, anytime you see a table here, there's more than one table. This is known as the entry table, at least for the Gantt chart, to enter in our task, the duration, and as you recall, when you scroll over, the start and the, uh, well, there's the finish as well, but that's automatically calculated based upon when you start and the duration of the task. In any case, let me go ahead and uh, scroll back. So that's the entry table. How do you go ahead and find out what table that you're in and if you want to see what other tables are available for that view, the Gantt chart view? Well, come up here, click on the view tab. I mean, we're talking about views, right? So that makes sense to me. Go to the view tab, go to the data group, and there you go, tables. Click on the tables drop down arrow and there you go. It's checked. We're in the entry table. If I come up here and select cost, boom, the table changes, not the view. You can see over here in the view bar, I'm still in the Gantt chart view, but the table here, when it comes to entering in the data, has changed. It's talking about cost. I mean, you can still change the task here. So if I come down here and uh, click once, click softly again, so I can get the cursor in there or just, you know, select it. 
and then come up here in the uh, entry bar and you know type in print phases and then hit enter. You can still make changes to the task there, so let me go ahead and undo that. But notice over to the right here, instead of uh, having the duration and the start date, we've got now about costs, fixed costs, fixed cost accrual, total cost, things like that. So again, if you ever get lost, ask yourself two questions. What view am I in? You can see that over in the view bar. And in that view, when you're looking at a table, if a table is available, what table is it? And to find that out, you can either, again, come up here to the View tab, to the Data Group, click on the Tables drop-down arrow, or better yet, let me just go back to the Task tab instead of going through all those clicks. To get to the View, to the Data Group, you can just go ahead and uh, right-click on the Table Header Cell. When you right-click, it'll show you there, well, you don't even have to right-click. If you just hover over it, it shows you in that pop-up the table is the cost, and the view is the Gantt chart. So what view am I in, and what table am I looking at in that view? Go ahead and, as it says, right-click it to change it. Go back to the entry table for the Gantt chart. or back to something that we're used to seeing. Okay, let's go ahead and start entering in our resources into project here. So later on, I can show you how you can assign those resources, like the work resources, so I can start working on these tasks here. Also, material resources and costs. So to enter in these resources, we need to change views by coming over here and right-clicking on the view bar and going to the resource sheet view. There you go. This is where we enter in the resources. you got many fields here. The first one is the indicator column. It'll show icons that project fields that you should be aware of, information that when you hover over that icon, it'll give you a little pop-up memo. And then to the right of that, you've got the resource name. You can actually type in the name of the person, like Bob Smith, or do what I'm doing. You can type in the function of the resource, of what they're going to be doing, like writing, so writer1. That way, if I have additional writers, I can label them as Writer 2, Writer 3, Writer 4, and so on. And then when I hit the Tab key, you can see that uh, Project automatically fills in a bunch of defaults. Let me go ahead and go over each one of these fields. The next field here is that you have the uh, type of resource, which is Work, Material, or Cost, as we covered in an earlier training video here. And you can see there's Work, Material, and Cost. Let me click off. Now, this writer is going to be working, so we'll leave it as Work. And then as far as budget goes, um, I'll show you how you can convert a resource later on into budget, even though it doesn't show it here. Let me go ahead and click off. Then you've got the material label. It specifies unit of measurement. Like, for example, if you type in shingles, that can be measured in cases. Or if you type in reams, that can be measured in, well, paper. Like a ream of paper contains 500 sheets. So if my resource name is uh, plain paper, and the type would be material, of course, then the uh, material label could be reams. So when I go ahead and I assign that resource to a task, it will be assigned as one ream of paper. So that's the label for the material and how it can be measured in, or the unit of measurement. And then you've got initials, which is the abbreviation of the name here. So you can have it as, uh, well, big W there, or you can come up in here and WR1, and then go ahead and hit the tab key. Like I said, you can make changes here. Then you've got the group, which will contain the name of the group the resource is assigned to. Now, you don't have to assign your resource to a group. Just go ahead and type it in. I'm going to have internal resources, so I'll type internal. And then if a resource is external, like we're um, going to be having some of the uh, tasks outsourced to people outside of the company, then I'll go ahead and add the label field in the group field for them as external. Let me go ahead and hit the tab key. The maximum units is the percentage or hours of work a resource can do when assigned to a task. So if they're at 100%, my default working hours a day are 8 hours. Then that means that Writer 1 can work at full hours or 8 hours a day. Then you've got the standard rate, the rate paid for regular and non-overtime work. And then, of course, you have the overtime work. And then you've got the cost per use, or cost accrued each time a resource is used. Let me go ahead and scroll over so we can see the uh, remainder of the fields. Then you have a crew at, which it tells project when to calculate which costs, either, well, standard rate, regular, or overtime, will be calculated for a resource. It's either going to be prorated, or you can see the uh, other options, at the start or the end of the task, and prorated is as the task is completed. And that's the default. Okay, let me go ahead and click off. Then you have the base calendar, shows the calendar in use by the resource. And by default, it's going to be the project calendar. Of course, you can go ahead and click in here and change that if you'd like. I'm not. Let me hit the escape key. And then you have the code field, which contains extra information about a resource. And of course, you can add more columns here or additional fields. We'll learn how to do that in a later training video.
as well as removing some of the fields if we don't want to have those fields displayed in the uh, view here. Now if I go ahead and hit the home key on the keyboard it automatically takes me back to the first cell in the entry table here. So I can go ahead and come down here and add the next resource. And we'll have editor 1 as work, hit the tab key, the uh, initials are fine, and then we'll do internal. Now the moment I start typing in the first couple of letters or the first letter I, it automatically fills in with a copy of what it sees up above and trying to be helpful if you just hit enter or hit the tab key on the keyboard I'll automatically fill in the rest of the uh, data here maybe you're trying to duplicate which makes it easy and nice in fact a lot of the things that you can do within the cells within these tables within project there are a lot of shortcuts that I have in my Excel 2010 uh, training videos that are very helpful if you want to you know cut back on some of the work here and not have to uh, duplicate some of it when you've got the shortcuts that are available in any case, I recommend that you watch my Excel 2010 training videos when it comes to working with cells. And as I go along in these entry tables or any of these tables, I'll show you as many shortcuts as I can that uh, are pertinent to what we're working on here. But hey, you can learn more, so watch my Excel 2010 training videos. We'll go ahead and leave the uh, rest of the defaults here. I'm going to try to keep it simple in this training video, and then in later training videos, we'll learn how to add the uh, standard rate, overtime rate, cost per use. Let me go ahead and go back to uh, the next row here. In fact, I'll show you a shortcut. I'll type in the next resource, and I won't enter in the group's name internal, although the project manager one is going to be internally, but after I type in the next one. What I can do is if i got a lot of resources that will have the uh, same information, like for example, these two will both be internal. I can just come up here, and here's a shortcut that you can learn in my Excel 2010 uh, training videos. But hey, why go there when I'm showing it to you here? Well, there's a lot more in my Excel 2010 training videos, again, that uh, I may not be able to show you here for the sake of keeping focused. In any case, you can hover over the lower right-hand corner until you get the black cross. That's known as the autofill handle. When you click and drag that down, it'll automatically fill in the rest of the cells with that initial cell that you have selected. It'll copy it down, so hey, that could save some time if you got dozens of resources that will have the same information. Just fill in one, then click and drag that autofill handle down, and you're good to go. It automatically copied that one cell into the other cells. Let me go ahead and uh, continue on here. Okay, subject matter expert will be external. Okay, for the travel expenses, it's not going to be work. If I type in the letter C on the keyboard when I'm in that field, it'll automatically convert to, well, the only field that begins with the letter C, cost. Then I can hit the tab key to uh, select that and hit the home key on the keyboard so it takes me back to the first cell. Then I can just hit the tab key and type in the uh, next resource. And then type in the letter M for material, hit the tab key. And then for the uh, material label, glossy paper comes in like, let's say, reams of 500. So that's the unit of measurement I'm going to be using when I assign this resource to any one of the tasks. I'll actually be assigning a whole ream of paper. So I can type it in uppercase, R-E-A-M, or lowercase, it doesn't matter. Let's just call it a ream here. And I'll enter in more resources later, but you get the idea here. The next thing I'm going to be entering in are the uh, budget resources. And then for the budget miscellaneous cost, the type's going to be cost, hit the tab key. Let me come up here and let's do for the glossy paper. We don't have any. We'll have to have that outsourced and have somebody else bring it in. So it'll be an external resource. Let's go ahead and do the budget for labor, which is going to be the uh, work type. Hit the home key and then do budget for material. Then type in the letter M, and then I only have one material, so I can just go ahead and identify it with ream. So that's the budget for the uh, ream of paper. Now if I had additional materials, like let's say pens and pencils, and the material labels for those were boxes, and uh, maybe paper clips, and the material labels for those were boxes as well, then you can go ahead and create additional budget materials, one for each uh, different material label, or you know just go ahead and leave this blank and say it's for all materials. I mean, it's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and do ream here and then internal and hit enter. And to keep it simple, that's pretty much it when it comes to entering in your resources here, except that when it comes to entering in your uh, budget resources, project will not differentiate between budget and other resources without setting each budget resource its properties to budget. So to bring up the information or properties for your resources, go ahead and select it. 
and then double click on it and there you go resource information come over here there's the uh, box for budget go ahead and check it click okie dokie and it will convert that to your budget cost resource so now it's not a resource that is going to be costing you money it's now because we have it checked it's the amount of money that we want to set aside for the cost resources then we can come down here double click on work there's our budget click OK that we set aside for our work resources and then materials go ahead and check it and click OK thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos and for great specials on my products Please see the description below this video.